Painting along with Bob Ross is not as easy as you thought, which is why you landed on this video here. Lucky for you, I'm gonna give you the easiest Bob Ross painting to paint along to as a brand new painter. This has got all the elements that you want in a Bob Ross landscape, but they're so introductory and so easy that even you, yeah, you can dominate it the first time. And I'm personally gonna go over the video, tell you why it's easy, show you some extra little tips so that way you dominate it. And you know what? Everything's just gonna click a little bit better so that way you build your confidence. Here we go. What is going on all you beautiful and creative people? Wild here. Now, when it comes to doing the easiest Bob Ross painting, you can find it right here on YouTube. It's actually called Distant Hills and it's from season three, episode five. Now, what makes it one of the easiest Bob Ross paintings is the fact that it's a limited palette painting, which means you spend less time cleaning your brushes and more time painting and keeping your focus. Since we will be using less colors, there is a better chance of you not mud mixing, which is gonna save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Now, when you start off with this painting, you actually only need to put a very thin background layer of color. The colors blend perfectly here, which makes it way easier for any brand new painter. Since it only requires very little paint for the rest of the painting, you will have an extremely easy time layering on top of your canvas. Again, another win for any brand new painter out there that struggles with Bob Ross paintings, because as we know, layers are tough. When it comes to creating the sky in this painting here, you can't over blend. In fact, it's actually gonna help you and create a velvet soft sky that's gonna look beautiful. And that's easy for any painter out there to accomplish. Now, all you just have to make sure you do is that you actually push all that color into the canvas, making that background color very thin. So that way, when you do put layers on top of it, it's gonna be a breeze. When it comes to the clouds here, there are two types. The first one is our palette knife clouds, which are really easy to do, because all you have to do is take your color and scratch them in in a zigzag motion. Once that's done, you just have to feather them in with a light two inch brush. And you know what? That's it. <laughs> Super easy. Even you can do it. If you're a brand new painter, I can probably safely assume you struggle making mountains with a palette knife. The good news is you have the easiest Bob Ross mountain ever in this tutorial here. All you have to do is use your fan brush and remember to add a few little bumps in the shape of a mountain. This will really add to the realistic look, so remember to do it. The other reason this mountain is so easy is the fact that you have something that is not in this painting that I know you struggle with, and that is paint breaks. You don't have to do that here. All you need to do with your mountain is take your brush, go under the ridge of the mountain and pull it down into a nice fading shape and allow that mountain to be pushed back. And there, my friends, you have the easiest Bob Ross mountain that looks fantastic. When you get to the mid ground, you will be introduced to mid ground clouds, which again are super easy to do. Since it's basically light red on white, you won't contaminate your white paint much here. Just remember to swirl them in and then fluff them with a dry brush at the end. And trust me, you're gonna have some awesome, amazing looking clouds. Hey, Wild Cutting in here real quick. If you like this type of content and wanna see more of it, you can do me a few things. Go down below, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, or go above and beyond, become a YouTube channel member, or hit that super thanks in the bottom right hand corner to show your true love for me. But now back to the video. A huge portion of this painting is just creating rows and rows and layers and layers of distant trees. And this is really easy for any new painter to do. Just start with your mixture of brown that Bob shows you how to make and add white into it and start building your tree layers. Each layer you build that gets closer to us, just remember to add a little more brown to make it darker. This is gonna create the illusion of more depth and it's the easiest way to build real strong depth and a perspective in your painting. Okay, you couldn't expect the whole entire painting to be a breeze. It's a Bob Ross painting and there's some tough parts. And there is a cliff and a tree. That can be difficult for new painters, but stick with me on this one because I'm gonna show you how to make it super easy for you. Since we use such little paint for pretty much the entire painting, anytime you take any of your thick layers or colors and apply it on top of your canvas, it's gonna stick extremely easy. The nice thing for new painters here is you can actually be very heavy handed with your paint on the cliff and tree. 
Since this painting creates a forced perspective, there actually should be a lot of detail in the two elements that are the cliff and tree. So actually adding a lot of thick paint is gonna add more detail to those two elements, which is gonna add to that forced perspective effect. In the bottom corner on top of our cliff, we actually have some grass, but you know what? I'm not that big of a fan of it. I don't think it looks that great. So how about we just skip it? Add a little bit of rock effect on top of our cliff by taking a mixture of white and brown in your palette knife and just go slightly across it. It's gonna add these different depth effects of rocks and how it looks like it's got three dimension shapes to it. And I think that actually looks a lot better. But if you wanna try the grass, hey, go ahead. Just make sure you take a nice fatty paint to apply on top of that thick paint and you'll be good. Another reason why this painting is so perfect for beginners is when you get to the tree highlights, again, we put very little color on our canvas. So when you take your nice fatty cream highlight color of paint, it's gonna easily stick to your canvas. This is gonna be one of the easiest ways to apply highlights to your tree. That's gonna look awesome. This Bob Ross tutorial right here is perhaps one of the easiest Bob Ross paintings to follow along and paint to for a brand new painter. Now you notice I said, one of, because I actually did a top 10 list that you can see right here of the easiest Bob Ross paintings. And I think I actually missed this one. This might not be the easiest, but it definitely should be within the top three, if not maybe number one. But number one from that list right there is actually really, really easy. It's a tough one. So how about this? Why don't you tell me which one's the easiest by checking out this video over to the right hand side of the top 10 easiest Bob Ross paintings to paint along to. And then you let me know which one you think is best. And I will catch you all in the next video. Take care and of course, peace.